Hello and welcome to Dynamic Array Formulas. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. A dynamic array formula basically is one formula that you write in one cell, but it returns multiple results. And those results spill out into the adjacent cells. The easiest way to demonstrate is just to turn right to Excel. Exercise one. All right, we're just gonna get started with this warm up exercise. Equals, all right, this curly brace means we're gonna start an array. So I'm gonna go with one, two, three, and then close the curly brace. And I'm gonna hit enter. And what you're gonna see is this single formula returned multiple results. And these results spilled into the rows because I'm using this semicolon. All right, so what if I wanted them to spill into columns instead? No worries, equals curly brace, one, two, three, separated by commas, and that's gonna spill into columns. We can also combine rows and columns, so equals I could do one and then a comma, a two, and then a semicolon, three comma four, semicolon, five comma six, close the curly brace and enter. All right, this is just a warm up, and it's designed to show that when you have an array that's returned by a formula, it can spill into rows and or columns. All right, now that you're warmed up, let's get to the next exercise, exercise two. Now, there are many functions that return multiple results. These are called dynamic array functions. The first one that I wanna cover is called the sequence function, equals sequence. And what we can do is say, how many rows do we wanna return? We wanna return three, enter. We could also say, how many columns do we want? Three, enter. And now this result spills into multiple rows and columns. We could also say we want only one row and three columns, that's fine. If we want three and three, we can do that, and that's fine. Now, there's some other arguments like what's the starting value? So I could say let's start this whole sequence at 100. That's fine. And then we can also say what is the step value? Like what's the increment value? By default, this one, we could say increment it by tens. And that's what we get. Okay, so as you can see, the sequence function takes a couple of arguments and then returns multiple results and those results could spill into multiple columns or rows or both. Let's get to the next exercise, exercise three. Another dynamic array function is unique and another one is sort and we'll see how to combine both of these. Let's say we have a list of items and there might be some duplicates in them. Maybe this is a big list of transactions or something we've exported from some system. And what we'd like to do is get a list of the unique values but we don't wanna delete our original range. Well, for this, we could use an array formula that uses a dynamic array function like unique, equals unique, and we just point it to the range, close the function, and enter. And now we can see this formula returns many results, and those results spill out into many cells. So can I like type something here? No, if I try to type something there, it's gonna break the spill range. So that range has to be free and clear of any other values. Okay, and now what if I wanted this list sorted in ascending order? No problem. We can wrap the sort function around this unique function. So now the unique function is gonna do its thing. It's gonna grab a unique list of values found in the item column, and it's gonna return that list to the sort function. The sort function is then gonna do its thing, and it's gonna return that list sorted. Enter. Got it. So I hope these basic concepts are a nice overview or warm up for dynamic array formulas. Believe me, there are many more applications and many additional functions. So if these seem like they're gonna be helpful, definitely dig in and check out some additional details. Thanks so much for joining me, have a great day. Hey Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 